Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise this morning? Are you happy to be back in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you in a great expectation this morning? For the fire to fall this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. We sing a wonderful chorus this morning. got one thing and you can take him away from me I've got one thing and you can take him away from me let me tell you this morning you can keep soul body lay down in the cold, cold grave but I've got one thing and you Yeah. 
worship him this morning. You have a reason to praise him this morning. Come on, church, worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. You are born to be worshipped this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, let the fire fall. Father, let the fire fall. The devil is in trouble this morning. Father, let the fire fall. Woo, hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. We're going to open a meeting this morning with a word of prayer, hallelujah. We're going to ask our brother, Pastor Vic Abrams from Kimberley this morning to come and open the meeting with a word of prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got a prayer request here this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Brother Peter, my humble from Jehovah. My car was stolen in September this year. I tried hard to get through the heart of those who did that by praying for them to God. My brethren, that car was doing the work of God, using it for the purpose and for the congregation. I need your prayers. God bless. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Our gracious heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we deem this a tremendous privilege to be in your presence. And Father, we stand in awe as we look back across the meetings this weekend. And Lord, the power of the spoken word and Lord, the beautiful quality of spirit, Lord, that moved through this place. We thank you, dear God, for your faithfulness. The Bible says, though we disbelieve, yet he abideth faithful, for he cannot deny his word. And Father, we are the sons of God. The Bible says, Lord, what manner of love the Father hath for us that we can be called the sons of God. Lord, we thank you for what has transpired the past few days, Lord. And Lord, how the word has been spoken and our hearts have been challenged. And we feel activated this morning, dear God. And once more, Lord, as we stand in your presence at the last meeting, Lord, we think of Jesus. That last day of the feast, he cried out, if any man thirst, let him come to me. And out of his belly, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. May once again, dear God, the Spirit flow freely this morning. Lord God, that we say a Samson of old, once more, Lord, would you visit your people this morning. Think of this prayer request this morning, Father. Lord God, you know all things. Pray that the grace and power and love of God may be our brother's portion. And as we stand in great expectation this morning, dear God, may you grant unto each and every saint of God this morning their heart's desire. And when the service comes to a close, Lord, and we go to our respective places, and we can say like those two men on their way to Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us along the way and as he opened up his word. Grant it, Father, we pray for the music, the songs, the testimonies. And above all, Lord, we pray for your servant who will minister the word of God. May you anoint him and inspire him, dear God. Give him utterance this morning that he may speak spirit-spoken words. Father, for the glory and honor of God, would you bless all things this morning as we commit it into your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. Are you happy this morning? Are you glad to be back in the house of the Lord? I believe you are fresh this morning. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Can we give a lot of way for free this morning? Oh, hallelujah. Can we give a lot of smile for free this morning? Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Why the us come this morning and collect the tithing and the offering this morning? Praise what turn around and tell your brother, man. Hallelujah. We have a good time in the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why we sing a wonderful chorus this morning? While the world looks upon us as we struggle alone, they say we have nothing, but they are.
this morning. Listen here this morning. Hallelujah. I know. I'm not wealthy. And this clothes. They are not you. I don't have much money. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to me, that's all that matters. That the world may not see. I have a good place to sleep. There's food all on my table, and there's shoes, shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fire. Sing the last words this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I know I'm not wealthy. And these clothes, they are not you. I don't have much money. Oh, but no. All that matters So that So that the world So that the world may see this morning Thank you Lord, thank you Lord For your blessing Thank you, thank you, thank you Oh I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You, Lord, for your blessings, for your blessings, for your blessings. What more do you want him to do? What more do you want him to do this morning? Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What is that time? Satan prepared himself ready this morning to come and write and render item for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me deep. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe this morning the move is on? Hallelujah. Do you believe that morning the move is on? And the devil cannot stop that move. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The movie's on, my Lord. The movie's on. And the movie's on, my Lord. The movie's on. I can hear the rustle in the marble tree. And I The movie song. Oh, the movie song. Thank like, God. Oh, the movie song. I can hear the rustle in the marble retreat. And I. Why stop that step forward? See, 
come a little closer Where the streams are flowing this morning.
Praise the Lord. Can we give me a hand of praise? Hallelujah. Praise why Johannesburg group step forward this morning. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just sing a small song. Jesus is the Lord. Every knee shall bow. Amen.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Why Nigeria step forward this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bow down and worship him.
that's flooding my soul Lord you took away my pain and you made me whole so I live set free and you've taken my burdens away and if you lead me Lord I'll follow all the way he is Messiah, he is Messiah. Sometimes it seems so hard, but God will always lead the way, and it's only by His love and grace that I can say, He is Messiah, He is Jehovah, oh yes He is. Praise the Lord. Are we going to worship the King this morning? Are we going to worship the King this morning? I believe you're ready for the word this morning. Are you ready for the word this morning? Turn around, shake your neighbor's hand. Say, it's wonderful, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. While we welcome our precious pastor. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah.
worship him let's praise his name let's give him glory the lion of judah hallelujah he was the one that prevailed he's the one that overcame for you and me he's the one that stepped forward and took that book of redemption hallelujah he's the one that stood forward and when no man was found worthy the lion of the tribe of judah hallelujah his name is jesus and we come to worship him this morning we come to praise him we come to lift up our hands. We come to show Him we love Him. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. My, 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 my. God bless you. You may be seated. We greet you once again in the precious and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome you into the presence of Almighty God. We are so thankful that we are not gathered under any group or church or denomination, but we gathered under the banner of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's who we are gathered to. And it's so good to see old friends and uh, new friends that has come and has just blessed us and graced us with your presence. And we want to say thank you for coming. If you've come for the first time today, we want you to feel welcome and enjoy the liberty and the presence of Almighty God. Because the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. Amen. So we want to say uh, thank you for coming. We have uh, a pastor here, uh, Pastor James Chuma from Zimbabwe. Could you just stand there, brother, and your wife? We'd just like to welcome them. They've come all the way from Zimbabwe to be with us this morning. So we trust you'll have a real blessing. My, we have... Uh, this is the last day of the feast, but it doesn't mean it's over. Hallelujah. You believe that there's one more push? There's one more go at it, brother, sister. There's one more chance that if you didn't receive your blessing during this meeting, but today, Jesus stood at the last day of the feast. He said, if any man thirst, any man, whosoever will, let him come and take of the waters of life freely. So you welcome today to dash into the promises of Almighty God. And we want to salute our precious brother Olu. What can we say about the message last night? The burden of freedom. Brother Olu, we salute you. We bless you, man. And what a masterpiece that was. What a blessing. My, just to see the, the way the Holy Spirit led him to say certain things. And, and uh, after the meeting, certain people begin to just express how the... They, they understood this and they understood that and wow, that meant so much to them. And, and we're so thankful. And uh, Brother Olu was said something striking. He says, you know, when, when Adam came on the, on the scene, he says, before that, a tree never died. He says, the enemy was bound because the son of God, Satan was right in the garden of him, but he was bound. Why? Because there was a manifested son. And again, that comes up back in the end time, brother, where the enemy will be bound. Where? By the manifestation of the sons of God. And they come in back, brother. They're in process. There's something happening in the unknown world that the, the devils don't even know what's going to happen, brother. But there's going to be an activation all of a sudden. Like on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, suddenly suddenly brother it didn't just uh, they didn't know when it was going to happen but they were ready and i want to tell you today let us be in the right place at the right time so when the ignition happens the activation when suddenly the dynamics come we in the right place to receive the promise of god hallelujah man i like what brother olu was stressing that that, that we gotta get hungry we, we sometimes too lazy, we slothful, we don't pray enough. You see, God, uh, when he came down uh, and he met Moses in the burning bush, you know what was God's words? I heard the cries of my people and I have come down uh, and I remember my promise. So there's a lot of promises, but the people must start crying for it. 
The people must start getting hungry and thirsting and say, Lord, that's me. Every time a promise is mentioned, you must say, that's me. Hallelujah. You might be in a state, I don't care, but you must claim it for yourself and cry out for it. Well, there's one more meeting, brother, and I believe God is able to meet with us. He's able to touch us this morning as we break through those realms, as we break through every spirit. And, and, and brother, I, I, I said last I night, we do concern about this flesh. It's time we break away from ourselves. Hallelujah. Time we break away from ourselves and break into the spirit of God. And once you get away from this man and you come away from the earth, that's why God told John, come up high as John. Because I want to show you things, but you're in the flesh. As long as you're down here, you've seen this and you've seen that. But when you come up higher, now you're in the spirit. Then God can deal and show you things. So I say, come up higher. This is our last meeting. And I believe God is going to bless us. My. They just told me, oh, Pastor Brian Hyde is here and his family. Where are you, brother? Brian? Oh, this I God bless you. Good to have you with us. So it's my honor and privilege as the musicians. Brother Eddie, Brother Conte want to come up with Utando Lake. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, man, sing with South African song. So uh, we're going to sing that. And as he ministers the word of God, remember this is going to be the prayer line meeting. So let's break away from the flesh and uh, what's happening around us. And we're not tired. There's nobody tired here. Hey, there's nobody tired. We are tired, but we're tired of the devil. So we say enough is enough. Hallelujah. This is the last meeting, man. Enough is enough. I'm leaving here free. That's what Brother Olu said. Freedom of spirit, brother. The liberty. No more burdens. The filled with the Holy Ghost. Full with the anointing of God. That's what we're going to leave you with. Praise God. my honor and privilege to bring up a special friend all the way from Sierra Leone our pastor John Conte God bless you come on come on hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me see that for a while. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, glory to God, amen. I'm happy this morning. And the Holy Spirit is also happy this morning. 
South Africa is different. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I love your worship. It's so exciting. I just can't really say much. Hallelujah. My expectations are high this morning. Like it has always been. That has no change. Like Brother, um, brother Ubledo said yesterday, it's like there's a cooling down for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And you, you don't seem to see the desire anymore like it used to be for the feelings and with feelings. And the only thing that settles this issue is the Holy Ghost baptism. You can't be a Christian without the Holy Ghost. It's simply not possible. It's like wanting to live here without a breath of life. Before I preach, I want to activate your faith this morning. Because God is not dead. People are still being sealed away by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So I've been greetings to the convention of back home. I came with my wife, sweet sister Sarah. Sarah, please stand up. With, with all the hard times we've been through in that country, war, and then lately Ebola, one demon just held that country in hostage. I stood there, I said, Lord, this is just one demon called Ebola. Can bring a whole country into subjection. No, no shaking hands. You can't trust nobody. If your wife goes to the market and she comes back, she has to offload. Before you can even say, thank you. Imagine coming to church like this, you can't greet nobody, you can't embrace nobody. How do we even worship? scriptures like Mark 16 we are taking out because if you fall under the anointing I won't even touch you <laughs> glory to God hallelujah that was how vicious that demon was but we overcame by the grace of God because God is not dead they we see that that was terrible very, very terrible. I can't even explain it to you. But it was terrible. It was terrible. You can't eat anything raw. They will send spies into the churches because they were intending to close the churches up. Because they say the churches is where people meet. And, 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 and this virus would not let you touch somebody. Once you touch an infected person, it transfers. And the less than one hour, it is through with you drains out your whole system, destroys your whole immune system. Hallelujah. But God took us through. By faith. Can somebody say amen to that church? There was a tiny brother in my church is called the Daniel. So many of you, a few folks here know about the Daniel. So a word of prophecy came from the state. But the daddy's wife has a brother in the state. So the lady is very religious. She went to a church, and in the church, the pastor said, and there's a brother in Sierra Leone, but Daniel, but Daniel would die of Ebola. So the news came to church. So I said, Well, Daniel, that's a choice you have to make, but I'm the pastor of this church. Nobody dies in this church of Ebola. So, if you see that, and um, I was very grateful that I have God left, you know, God leaves room for faith. God leaves rooms. It's what you can believe. I said there's a room we can believe that if it was a prophecy, it can fail. I'm not defying the man of God, but I can make that prophecy fail. Because I shall not die. But I shall live to declare the works of God. 
And God saw us through. Let me see that. So we are still standing strong. And this morning, there's a knockout for the enemy this morning. Young people, come on this morning. Don't stay in your pews dead. Because today can be the day God has ordained to free you at last. We see that. Hallelujah. So greeting from the great church in Freetown. Came by the James. But Jim, stand up. Fine young man. I don't know if you know about the James. Wonderful young brother. You see that? And that is his wife, Sister Rachel. Bigger than bigger. So we thank God that we are privileged to be in this convention. This is my first time coming to South Africa. But it's been a blessing. I've been had all the ministers speak from Brother Isaac, a young man I'm so proud of. It's been so, such an inspiration to my young people back home. Because it's hard to find a young man that can stand over this message. Ripening young man. The young people are so immature. But God made no mistake when he called you a young man. So your calling is not premature. I said your calling is not premature. You are called the right time by the right message and you are in the right place. So don't think God called you too early. No, he called you late. You came in your time and in your season. And this is your time this is your season. If you feel that way, then say amen to that. Let me see that. So thank you, Brother Raymond Thompson, for this invitation and the privilege. I love you so much. Thank you very much. And all the song leaders, all the, all the, the musicians, and also um, all the gratitude, all the blessings that we've enjoyed so far. Nice, sweet to tell. Brothers are so sweet. Thank you for everything. May God bless you richly. May we reward you richly. With the women, may God bless your ministry. May God crown with the dynamics this season. Hallelujah, praise God. Therefore, this morning, I want to bring a little something to your little thought. I was going to speak on thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. So, brother, because I, I, I want to talk to the mature seed sons. You are still a seed son, but mature seed son. Because there can't be a bath without a mature seed son. So you are still a seed son, not manifested yet. But in your seed state, you've got to be mature before you can be reborn. To be reborn without maturity makes you premature. So I have a question this morning. Where is the ripened seed of Malachi 4? You mean this message after 51 years can produce mature seed sons? We still can't find people with bright character since 1965? What then have we been doing? We can still be babies over 52 years in this message you can't still forgive where do we think we are going but there has to be a bride man I don't care who fails what you say there's going to be a bride and this morning I am one of them my mind is made up I'm going to be a bright material. I'm going to be seated. Glory to God. Let me tell you something I took with the Holy just a few days ago. I was in Ghana. I had friends in Ghana. A few brothers there are sick. Terribly sick. And they are ministers. So I came to a cry to see if I could see them. They will not let me see them. So one of them called me as I should pray for him. 
he had like a, a kidney or liver problem or something. He said the only person he could trust to pray for him was me. Because he said he does not want people to know that he's sick. Because in our message, in our ranks, if they know he's sick of that disease, they will say God is judging him. They will try to trace back his life and find something he did wrong some time ago. And bring that thing up and connect it to his illness. When Ebola struck my country, they say God was judging me. Go through the message. So when we come to these meetings, we're looking for the sick to be healed. It's not in our heart. Because in our subconscious, we are even trying to see if God is not judging that man. But I don't want God's judgment. I make mistakes. But I want his grace. I prefer God's grace than God's judgment. Can somebody shout, Hallelujah! I am not asking for his justice. Because I might not pass his justice. But grace can rewrite my life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So this morning, forget about your mistakes. Your mistakes is not really in the counts. It is really who you are in Christ. What Jesus Christ has done for you. Let me see that. That's really terrible. So a lot of times we come to meetings, you know, you know, even hear claims. Claims is off this message. Everybody is afraid to make a claim. We preach the word, but no claim. Because we are afraid we might not measure up to the claims we make. But until you say it, God can't pack it up. Can somebody shout hallelujah? We see that. I want to get the atmosphere set for a revival. We preach the Holy Ghost, but no claim. People are afraid to say I have the Holy Ghost because they think if they say I have the Holy Ghost, their life cannot measure up. They are afraid to say I am an adopted son of the making. They can't say that. They are afraid to say I am from the God class of creation. They can't say that. They are afraid to say I am the continuation of the creation of God. I am not another creation. I am the continuation. They cannot say that. Because they are afraid that their critics might watch them. Hallelujah! I, came, I became a Christian. God gave me grace not to fear my mistakes. One thing I know, I am predestinated. My spiritual history shows have always been in God's mind. I cannot be lost. I told the devil, if I happen to go in hell, I will still love Jesus. I will still praise Jesus. So, it does this have your interest to take me down to hell? If I am in hell, I will still preach seven thunders. Give faith. I will still preach that surprise revival. Hallelujah. So, it is not in Satan's interest to take me down to hell. Because if I go down there, I will convert his entire people. Oh, somebody, somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Tanda Lake. So I have told the devil already, I'm not scared. So he has a choice to make. So either let me go or make me go down there and bring all his people out. Okay, I will still tell them Jesus died for you. You don't belong here. Because Jesus Christ went to social prison. And he preached down there. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Somebody shake your faith. Lift up your faith this morning. 
all things are possible to them that believe. Let me see that. So therefore, I have a little title this morning. I see faith is rising up this morning. The faith back is coming up. Let me see that. Oh, Tanda Lake. I'm so excited this morning. Oh, Tanda Lake. The Holy Ghost is bubbling inside my soul. Maybe see that. <laughs> the devil is already trembling. Because he knows you know who you are, where you're you coming from. So we have a little subject this morning, a little title. And all the Ephesians is here, I'm declaring that today. For thy seed to possess the gate of his enemies. I want to connect your seed back to an Ephesians. Because Ephesians is the place of the overcomer. No battle is lost in Ephesus. God told Joshua, no man, no mortal man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That was his mandate to cross Jordan. And this morning, we have a divine mandate that no demon, no spirit shall be able to stand before this bride. If you feel that way, then say amen this morning. Let me see that. So let's turn to the scriptures quickly. I want to excite myself this morning. I just hope you join me this morning. Glory to God. And the Ephesians is here for thy seed to possess the gate of his enemies. For an inspiration, the Ephesians brings us back to the glorious age of the overcomer. So we don't have no business over here. This flesh thing, making your efforts trying. That's over here. Over here, we have missing limbs, dysfunctioning livers and kidneys. But over in Ephesus, it's different. Praise God, hallelujah. Genesis 2 15 through 18, Galatians 3 16, but Peter read the same scriptures. And Genesis 1 and 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let me just read quickly. He said, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying and multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. That's your promise. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. That's how you stand this morning. The whole creation is waiting for you. Yeah. That's how important you are. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Galatians 3 16 and now to Abraham and his seed where the promises made he said not unto seeds as of many but as of one then to thy seed which is Christ be seated praise God hallelujah so I want to establish the Ephesians inspiration of the Holy Ghost the Bible says Kenya does it represent the age of the millennium we all know that it's message it represents the age of the overcomer the dispensation of overcoming because in Kenya they killed and born and took cities see but 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 it represents an age a dispensation of overcoming so the bride has an age a dispensation of overcoming and until we get into that age that dispense we can't overcome at all hallelujah praise God can somebody say imagine that church hallelujah and Malachi, if we came back and connected this 
Joshua, that's jo the book of Joshua, as a book of redemption, it said it, it parallels the book of Ephesians. Right? Right? And, and the book of Ephesians is a book of redemption. And the book of redemption is Jesus Christ. So the book of redemption is, is not only a book, but it, it is also a land. So Ephesians is a book, but also a land. The land of the overcomer. So it serves both ways. Can somebody say amen to your church? Because book in his hand. So Adam in Eden was what? Was Ephesians. That was Adam's Ephesus. Somebody say amen to that church. Now Adam was given a seed of his word. I think Brother Olu talked that last night. A seed of his word. He said this seed of God is what we are trying to bring out. Not just any seed. Malachi 4 revealed the entire Bible and he brought out seeds. He brought out church seeds. Pentecostal seeds. But in his message there is an original seed. Which he calls the seed of the entire Bible. And he says Jesus is the principal theme of the entire Bible. If you read the scriptures, you don't see Jesus with it again. Did you see that? So Jesus makes the Bible a book of life. If you take Jesus Christ out of the Bible, it is just a book. There is no life in it. But once Jesus is injected into the Bible, it becomes a book of life. The Lamb's book of life. Can somebody say amen to that church? So we can just preach word, 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 no Jesus. We've got to connect Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to the world to make that word life. May you see that? Let me see that. So when Abraham came, he opened the seals. Now listen carefully. Because don't miss this. But the Branham went before the beginning. No theologian did that. Before there was a time, before there was an angel, before there was let there be, he existed as Ella, Ella Elohim, self existing, self knowing. Hallelujah! But he existed with attributes. Which are called thoughts. That was his nature. To be a savior. Not to be a destroyer. But to be a savior. To be a son. To be a father. That is God's original attributes. He wants to be a father to you. He wants to be a son to you. Let me see that. That is his nature. His core nature. And out of that nature comes mercy and grace and forgiveness. Let me see. Then God expressed those attributes into virtues and thunders that became the logos, the word. And we we are members of his body. Members of the logos. Can somebody say amen? Then Elohim now spoke to the Logos. Then let us make man in our image. Jesus Christ said the Logos was the image of God. We all know that. But that image was not a shadow. It was a being, a person. God's image is not like your image. When God speaks of an image, he speaks of a being. If his image comes here right now, this place could be a little, a little loosed. And you see that? So Jesus Christ is the image of God. is the express image of the invisible God. That means when you see Jesus, you see God. Because Jesus gives you this God. Because God is a mystery. And you see that? Then Elohim spoke to the Logos. Let us make man in our image. 
Then God created man in his image after his own likeness. But the prophet said that was a seed of his word. A seed is only a potential tree. A seed needs growth to become a tree. When you take a seed and a tree, there's no semblance between the two. But the seed has transforming power. Once you sow that seed, there is a law on that seed to transform itself and becomes a tree. So when you hold the seed, you might not see anything in that seed that looks like a tree. Until you sow that seed on good ground. Then there is an invisible law. You don't see that law that's hanging over that seed. But once you plant that seed, that law takes effect. So you activate the law when you plant the seed. You don't need to see the law. You don't need to feel the law. The law is hanging there. But you've got to activate the law by sowing the seed. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me see that. If you have to wait until you see the law, you will sow that seed. So sowing the seed is your faith expressed in activating the law that makes that seed bring forth after its kind. And once you sow that seed, you can go and rest. The seed has potentials in itself to bring forth after its kind. That's God's law. Let the house shout hallelujah. Maybe see that. Let me see it. And what we lack in the church today is sowing. Because sowing goes with tears. Sowing goes with labor. Sowing goes with pain. But until we sow, because sowing is how you express your faith in the law to bring forth out of its kind. Hallelujah, praise God. And but the brother brought out the seed. Of the original Bible. And he took that seed to himself. Let me see that. The seed of God. So when he said, he came to put a revelation on Genesis 1 20, 26. That when God made his man in his image, he was a seed of his word. But the man has potentials. To become like God. Then he gave that seed a commission. He said be fruitful. And multiply. But the problem said Adam never came to that. That means he never came to the fruit of his seed. Because that was a commission. Because the fruitfulness of Adam. Was to reproduce all the like precious sons. That means we were the seed. We were the fruit of that seed. So if Adam had come to fruitfulness. It would have been you and me standing here today. Oh somebody say amen to that church. So Adam could not come to his commission. Because he himself had to overcome. So he failed in his commission. But God sent a second Adam. <laughs> his name is Jesus. And Jesus says without me, you can't be a fruit. Because he is the fruit of your seed. That means when your seed brings back after its kind, it reproduces who? Jesus Christ. You've got to believe this, man. Seven thunder gives you faith to believe this. Don't put your mind there. Let me see that. Many of us, we are sympathizing. We are negotiating God with our spirit. Let me see that. Let me see, let me see, let me see that. I want to preach this morning.
please give me time. Let us just rejoice in the words. Because the Holy Ghost will surely fall. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you shall be sealed. But let's enjoy the word this morning. Let me see that. Why do I love Genesis story? That's the only place we can go back to our old image. Pentecostals can go there. So the three from mystery of God was to restore us back to Eden. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. And that is your promise. And Jesus Christ makes that plea for revelation. Because he reveals who God is. Because God was hid in Christ. So you won't even know who God is except to see Jesus. Then how do you know who you are? You will also hid in God in Christ. He said because our life was hid in God through Christ. You can't see your life except you see Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the center of the revelation of God and you as well. Let me see that. So how can you know who you are without Jesus? Let me see that. And I, I'm not just about, about revelation now. But the knowledge of the son. A real God could minister. I want to, to, to the knowledge. It's a gnosko knowledge kind. Not just when you know it through your brain. It's an experiential knowledge. When you know Jesus. And the forgiveness of your sins. And you know Jesus in the power of his resurrection. That's a different kind of knowledge. It's a knowledge that comes to you by experience. That makes you know that you know that you know that you know. Let me see that. I was going to church. But I never really knew Jesus. Until 1983, then I knew there is a power that can make you stop adultery, make you stop fornication, make you stop. I knew God in the forgiveness of sin. My life changed, and that God is not dead, He's still alive. He can still change you. Hallelujah! Let me see that. Let me see. That. So we need men today that can preach experience than theology. To the many preachers, they preach theology. What the prophet said. They've not partaken yet of the fruit. How do you cross over Jordan except some spies come and convince you that the land is goats? The land is real. Then you can give your life for this land. But the Branham brought the evidence of the new land. And we are supposed to live by the evidence of the new land. How can you live in this message without that evidence? We see that. We see that. The evidence did not just come in word. But the Branham demonstrated the evidence that you might know the land is not fake. The land is real. In that land, missing limbs can grow back. In that land, the dead can come back to life. In that land, dysfunction leavers can be replaced. Hallelujah! Let me see that. Let me see that. I, 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 I want to hear men now that, that can tell me how it looks like, how it feels like to get the Holy Ghost. I want to hear that. To provoke my jealousy. To provoke my, my, my desire. Those are the guys I want to hear now. How does it feel like to get the Holy Ghost? 
What do I become if I get the Holy Ghost? We need those men for the hour, man. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Let me see that. And listen. What the enemy has done is to silence the voices of men. I know there's an arrogant side of it. For every genuine thing, there's a fake. But the fake must not deter you. Because you are genuine. You come from God. You need the Holy Ghost. Don't let some fake guy persuade you the Holy Ghost is not real. No, the Holy Ghost is still real. Somebody shouts hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is still real. Let me see. But Adam said, Adam's theophany has always been in Eden. So in Eden was his theophany, which was leading the animals. Like the Holy Spirit leads the church to be. You see, but in Genesis 2 7, man was not tuned, wasn't activated to eat. So God came and gave Adam a breath of life. Because that theophany can't come on dry. Because the dove leads the eagle. No dove, no eagle leading. So before the eagle comes, the dove must come first. The eagle comes on the dove. Somebody shout hallelujah. No Holy Ghost, no growth. You see that? I mean, let's get this clear. You see that? So that I know, I know his word, his word, his word. I, I, I respect the word. But it is the element of the word you bring out. You preach all this word, no Holy Ghost element. No baptism element. That word is chaff. So it's the content of the man's message. The element. Water, blood, spirit. A whole message has no blood. Has no water in it. Has no life. I am preaching today, man. This is South Africa. But the Raymond, am I free to preach? I'm preaching the words. Somebody, young people, come on now. This is your season now. This is your season now. Oh, we don't have to see that. Maybe see that. Maybe see that. That's what we, we call them six seals. They preach the word. No Jesus. The elements that make the body. No water of the word. People come to church condemn. The water should wash them out. They are so sticky in their wrong ways. They come to church for cleansing. But the word has no water. So the man comes to church sleepy. He comes to church sleepy. No refreshing. Because when you take a bath, what happens to you? You feel refreshed. At least the debts for that day goes off. Can somebody shout hallelujah? This is what church is made up of. When you come to church, you come for a washing. It takes away the guilt, takes the fear, and it refreshes you for the blood, the blood of Jesus. Let me see that. You come from work. You've been messed up in your office. You've made so many mistakes. You feel so clumsy. You come to church with a heavy spirit. What you need is the water of the word to make you refresh again. Because that's not your stop. You can still go on. Yeah. The blood of Jesus keeps you safe. Let me see that. 
But the problem said, the blood does not save you, but it must keep you safe. So if the man is saved, there's no continuous flow of blood, that's dangerous. The blood was not meant to save him, but it was meant to keep him. So when the church loses blood, people backslide. They lose faith. They lose faith in their salvation. They lose faith in their redemption. Because there is no blood. Young people, I don't care what you have done. The blood still speaks. I don't care your mistakes. The blood still speaks. Hallelujah. Let me see that. And the life was only meant to follow the blood. The life cannot come if there is no blood. Because the life rests on the blood. And when the blood comes, the life gives the token that the blood is here. Because you feel the spirit. Let me see that. Never see that. You come for a whole service, you don't feel the spirit. Ram says, I'm identified with the group that feels the spirit. We have the word of God made manifest because to be a Christian, you need to live in that atmosphere. To be kept safe, you need that atmosphere. So in this convention, Hallelujah! We didn't just come to attend a convention, but to feel the Spirit, to feel the anointing, to feel the Holy Ghost. Shout hallelujah! hallelujah. Let me see that. It's the elements in the Word. So the content of a man's message, it's not how long it is. It's the element. And the church can only survive by these three major elements. That's because those elements makes the body. Where is the water? Where is the blood? Where is the life? That's the lifeline. Once that is missing, that message is shock. That's why we are so excited about the seven seal. Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ makes up that seven seal. That's where you belong. That's where your name is. That's where you're coming from. From under the seven seal. Where there's water. Where there's blood. Where there's life. Under the seven seal, you cannot die. You can't be a church member. You're always on fire. Hallelujah. You cannot stand. You cannot rot. Let me see that. Let me see that. When I came into this message, there was one thing I had to do. Because I came from a Pentecostal church. So I already know the Holy Ghost. If, I, if, if it wasn't for that, I'll have been lost in this message. Because the first group I entered into said, you just believe you have the Holy Ghost. Yes. That the message is the Holy Ghost, that's all you need. But I have known the Lord by your baptism before I came. I know there is something called Holy Ghost. I've received it, I've tasted it. You can deceive me on that. Somebody say, Amen, church. So I stood my crowns. The first time I came into that church, I was leading songs. I just broke into tongues. The man said, no, 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 don't speak in tongues here. Yes, yes, yes. He said, that, that Pentecost. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I said, well, I mean, but I thought this message should be heard on Pentecost. So I was wondering. Then I heard a man called Brother Coleman. The first man I heard say, God said, but I'm the whole, I said, oh, that's the group I belong to. Yes. Well, thank God I have already known the Lord by way of a baptism. 
so you cannot deceive me now. Let's for the devil. And that is what I preach. And I will not stop preaching it until the rapture comes. There is a Holy Ghost. There is a changer, a transformation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a miracle, signs and wonders that God is alive. I will not stop preaching that. That is my experience. That is in my bath plate. Can you see that? Let me see that. God made no mistake to bring the prophet after Pentecost has come. In his days, he said that was why he had to go to the Pentecostals because they were the only ones that could receive the message. Because the Holy Ghost was there. The Methodists can't. They say, Black Eyes, what a devil. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They thought the prophet was crazy. But the Pentecostals can believe it. Because the experience, the dove was there. This message was not meant to fall on dry. The element of the baptism must be present. And young people, don't give up on that. I don't care how long it takes. Don't give up on that. Because the day you receive it, I tell you, the whole thing changes. The whole story changes. The whole lifestyle changes. You live in another world. Let me see that. Ram explains... You ask him a question. Let me explain quickly. They have, they have ask a question about each person's angel that's with him at bath. He put some mysteries there. Now it just explains how your earth the angel, which he calls the angel spirits of the earth. He ties that to your breath of life. He says when the child is born. See, what, what, the life that child has is blood life, hemoglobin life. Germ of life, but it's blood life. Because blood life makes your flesh. Because it takes blood to make flesh. So the life of the flesh is in the blood. You understand that quite well? Good. But that life depends on oxygen to survive. Because if your blood has no oxygen, it clots and you die. Correct? I think the scientists are here. For us, when the child is born, he has a blood life. Which depends on oxygen. But he needs a spirit to make breathing possible. So if the spirit doesn't come, he might breathe for a while, later on die. Alright? Because his blood life Depends on oxygen. That's the air. That's not. That's just the air. But he has a spirit, an angel of the earth, that aids breathing, that makes intake and outtake of oxygen possible. So if that doesn't come, it's a still bath. The child dies. But he says that spirit is a dying spirit. After a while, it dies. But it's an angel spirit of the earth. It's an earthly spirit given to you to help you breathe. So when that breath of life leaves you, see, so your breath actually is a life. It's not oxygen. Breath of life helps you to breathe in oxygen. That, that, that's the life of your breath. But it's different from, from the life of your flesh. That's your blood life. You must understand these basic things in the message. That's how it works in the spirit. It says so that child has to be given a choice. Then the child makes its decision. 
When the child does that, then the angel of the Lord comes down. Which he said is a spiritual body. Which he calls the new bath. And he says only the redeemed of angels. Not sinners. So once you make a decision to accept Christ, an angel comes down. You see, but what connects you, what activates your sense to the angel is a baptism. Because just the decision is not really enough. So there's an angel by you right now that's close to you. Because you could not have come this far without that angel. You see, listen, let me see that. But you see, our bodies, we are dead to that angel's presence. See so natural people they are bright but they are natural they have angels following them but their bodies are not tuned the body is not quickened to the signals of that angel so the prophets when you receive the Holy Ghost as a baptism you become a twofold being you become a candidate of association so the holy baptism associates you with that angel. You are now connected. Bram says by that spirit, Holy Ghost, he has a contact. So without the Holy Ghost, he has no contact. But not having contact does he mean he's not there. But you just don't have the contact. Let me see that. So you make a decision. The angel is there. Sanctified, the angel is there. But when the baptism comes, it establishes a contact. That angel now becomes real. He walks with you. He talks with you. He gives you messages. You are now in association with the unseen world. Oh, somebody shouts hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, somebody shouts hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me see that. Bram said, the new path. So, the new path came to you at the time of your choice. But if you don't move on to the baptism, the angel becomes inactive. That's where many Christians are. And if the Christian is not in touch with that angel, just cut off. They can't hear the angel like Balaam. Just cut off. The donkey has to help him. Master, can't you see? A whole prophet needs the donkey to tell him there's an angel standing there. Can somebody shout hallelujah? May God restore back the link. May God bring back the Holy Ghost and connect you back to your angel. You believe you have an angel? Do you believe that? Do you believe that in your heart? Then shout hallelujah. Let me see that. That's why the baptism is so important. It doesn't really save you. Romans 8, 11 says you have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelling in you. It quickens. It quickens. That begins at the baptism. A Holy Ghost man can feel the Holy Ghost with his body. He understands the Holy Ghost signals. The Holy Ghost moves on him. He knows when to move, when to go back, when to speak. He feels the signals of the Holy Spirit because his body is tuned. To that angel. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God, amen. This is to crave your thirst for the Holy Ghost. Let me see that. Oh, somebody say amen. So the Holy Ghost has led you this far. And that angel had a purpose, he wants to bring you to the word. Oh, I'm saying that angel, that's your spiritual body. That's your, that's your real seed. Because the baptism is only a temporal gift. 
when that angel steps and fills you, you don't need a baptism no more. Amen. You now become the person. The angel lives inside your body. He controls your senses. You become an image of God on the earth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let me see that. Let me see that. How many of you understand this so far? How many of you understand? How many of you understand so far? I think I took my time to explain this. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me see that. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the element of the baptism is so important. So as I said, Adam's theophany was always in Eden. Did the animals. But until a breath of life came, he can be a living soul. He was not alive to that presence. Like many of you, we are not alive. Because our senses are dead. But we are still sons of God. You come to this meeting, you are so dead, you are so cold. No one knowing him. But the Holy Ghost is really here. Yeah, the Holy Ghost is here, man. The angel is here now, man. You believe that's the image that is here? I didn't come with the angel. Once we're here, the angel comes down. Because we are so ever two or three are gathered in my name. Lord, am I in the midst of them? Let me see that. But this connection has to be made. It has to be made, church. Until that is made, you're going to struggle with your Christian life. Because this body needs a quickening. An awakening. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just feel the blood come over me right now. I just feel the Holy Ghost drop down right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The connection has to be made, man. And I'm trusting God today that somebody in these meetings will be connected to that angel. Where the angel can speak back to you, you can speak back to the angel. Let me see that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me see that. And when God breathed the breath of life into Adam's nostril, Ram said it was not a, it was not a moya. His body was quickened. He was now in touch with the word image. Don't forget, to be fruitful and to multiply was not given to Adam's two seven man. It was given to his spirit man. So this body cannot die. To replenish this means, if you take a limb or a hand from Adam's tear for me, it is when it has the ability to regrow that hand again. Because it replenishes itself. So if you, are, if you have a missing limb right now, I can cross over to Ephesians and go to your theophany and bring a limb and fix it there. But your theophany can grow it again because it replenishes itself. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. That body cannot die. It has the ability to replenish itself, to multiply itself. Glory to God, hallelujah. That is your theophany. That's the word body. Let me see so once that body was in Adam's flesh, this flesh cannot die. If a limb goes missing, that limb can recreate the same back. So when Adam lost his, his word image, he became an ordinary man. He began to sustain wounds, Ebola, even, even a mosquito can bite your flesh, you can be sick, a small insect. That's not supposed to be. If joy life is in you, Lord have mercy, praise God. If joy life is in you, no sickness can overcome your body. Hallelujah. It can kill cancer. It can kill the poison in your blood. Joy life, the life of God, the life of your theophany, it never dies. Yeah!
Let me see that. And that's why it has to come on Ephesians. Because our missing limbs, our twisted legs, there's a spear pass in Ephesians. Once you cross over Ephesians, you can be replenished. That's why this body has to be redeemed. It has to come back in condition where it cannot start the redemption of the Christ's body by fire baptism. My body is going to be redeemed. When this body is redeemed, mosquito bite can't make me sick. Ebola virus can't kill me no more. When the body is redeemed, shout hallelujah. Let me see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see that. Everything is for you over in Ephesians. It's a promising land. That's the good land. In Ephesians, you can ask what you will. That's how good the land is. In Ephesians, your spoken word don't come back void. When you speak it, so be it. When Joshua cross over, it says, Son, stand still. Moon hang over Angelo. It was a spoken word land. Hallelujah. You can't die in Ephesians. In Ephesians, you are an overcomer. Let me see that. When the Pranam said, You're theophany, you glorified body. It's so close to you. That's how close Ephesians is to you. That body is not in this time. You can't see it here. It is over in another land. And you see Jordan. is a small river Jordan. Starts between you and Ephesus. If you can just cross over Jordan. Lord have mercy. Your Jordan is your death. Every man here today has a death to die. Every minister has a death to die. Every young person has a death to die. To cross over Jordan. Let me see that. So Peter says, by this exceeding great and precious promises, we become partakers of his divine nature. And we escape the corruption. Because in us is a corrupt nature, a lustful nature, lost for the things of the world. That nature must be changed by a divine nature. Then you are free from corruption. Then your mind is set on things above. Your mind is set on things of the eternal. No more time to lost. Let me see that. Lost is the root of sin. Jim says that's how we all sin. Because we are carried away by our own lost. How we are enticed. That's how sin comes. Lost is a craving desire. Never get satisfied. It's a nature. So sometimes you can cut the branches of sin or the root. So Bram said, the man who is sanctified, the Holy Ghost, he was once a drunkard, the lost, the atmosphere. Once he smells alcohol, the desire. You see, how long do you manage that? Once is there because the enemy tempts you on the desire. He knows it's in your heart. You want to have sex with that lady? He knows that already. So he sees a lust, he sees a desire, and he tempts you on that desire. So until that is changed by a divine nature, you keep struggling. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah! But well, that is going to change this morning, church. 
God can change that. Let me see that. So we try sometimes to cut the branches. Stop smoking, stop adultery, but the lost, the desire for those things. That's the challenge. We don't go down to the root. And the man has to live his life managing lost. He's more lost conscious. So when he comes to church, he makes sure they look at women because he's suffering. Yeah. Yeah. If the devil knows you have the lost, Jesus said the devil cometh. Of course it cometh. But he has no place in me, that's all. So Satan's coming is not the matter. But if he comes, he has no place. He has no deposit in me. But if he has a deposit in you, he come back for his account. He comes and write a check. Because he knows in your heart he has a deposit there. But today Christ will change your account and give you a heavenly account and put new deposit there. Holy Ghost deposit. World deposit. Promises deposit. Shout hallelujah. Let me see that. So Brother Branham said, desire nothing. Because desire itself is painful. Especially when it's not on holy things. Let me see that. Kabram said the root. The snake. If he's sanctified, you cut off the branches. But the root. The thing that makes him do it is still there. And what can take it out? I'm clarified it's a fire baptism so what the snake understands when he sees fire he comes outside but until he sees fire he cannot leave you but today he will see fire somebody say fire, fire. holy ghost fire. fire let me see that when the snake sees fire let me see that that's why you cannot be converted until the Holy Ghost comes. That snake will never respond to word, word. Word, word, word. He wakes up and listens to you and sleeps again. See, let, let him try more. Then you are suffering. The things you hate are the things you do. The things you don't like are the things you do. That means you are a prisoner. You are not in your freedom. God did not design you like that. He made a provision for you. He sends fire, Holy Ghost fire. Holy, Holy Ghost fire. When that comes in, it settles the issue. Can we see that? So young people, that's a secret. So, so what choice do you make? Rather than having to manage lust. Hallelujah. Managing lust doesn't make it overcome. Amen. You can reform the human spirit, but you can't transform it. Because the human spirit has good as evil. But Paul says, even in the good, there is evil there. That's why you can't be satisfied with good self. Because in your best good self, there's evil there as well. You need a transformation. God must change your spirit and give you another spirit outside your human spirit. So I will give you a new heart, a new spirit, then my spirit. If you feel that way, then shout hallelujah this morning. I'm fed up with my human spirit. That tells me, don't talk to this brother. Let him be the first to greet you. That human spirit. I'm fed up. Let me see that. And most of us, our human spirit, have been so reformed. 
or do we miss the Holy Ghost for the human spirit? We are so nice. We appear so good. We can talk so nice about people but behind their back. It's human. They come here and say, brother, what, what a message. At your back, he doesn't preach much. He has, he has no revelation. He just said, what a message. He goes to Brother Raymond. That message has no mystery. But the Raymond is too shallow. It's not deep. But he just said, what a message. Well, ministers, we all know that. That's politic. Get out of that stuff, man. Shout hallelujah. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Work on your hearts. Hallelujah. Let me see that. I'm tired of that stuff. I must come to a spot. If I say God bless you, it's in my heart. If I say I love you, it's in my heart. I'm not hypocritical. Shout hallelujah. That's maturity. Not all this fine, fine talk. Politic talk. The politicians. They say things you want to hear. They want your vote. Once they get your vote, they dispense you. Oh, I'm preaching this morning. Bro, can I go on, sir? Let me see that. Where is that mature seed? Let me see that. We've got to die. Listen. It was easier for something to fight other people's fight. It was good at that. But he failed in fighting his own fight. Hmm. Most preachers are good at fighting other people's fight. They come to church, I cast out devil. But they are fornicators. So to fight your own fight is the challenge. I told God last week, I said, God, let me don't be like Samson. Cast out devils from other people. I have my own devils to fight as well. I have my own temperament. I have my own situation to fight. Because the battle Samson lost was his own battle. And that was dangerous for him. Is a human spirit, is human desires. That was what the colon fight. Many of us, that's the war we lose. It most times easier to see how the brother went wrong. I'm gonna straighten him out. What is hard to see is how we are wrong. So most times we are so occupied fighting other people's fight. And we leave our own fight. So this season, I'm taking on my own fight. I have fought for you for too long. I have my own fight as well to do. My temperament, my mood. Just wake up in the morning, you don't feel like talking to people. What is wrong? Well, I am moody. Just come to church. I don't feel like greeting anybody today. I want to be by myself. That's an evil spirit, man. You're going to cast it out this morning, man. Shout hallelujah. Let me see that. Where is that weapon seed? If you think that minister need help, go help him. Most times, even we ministers want to help other ministers. I will straighten him out. But what's your authority? You're not even adopted yet. Straighten who? Who is straighten who? No fire, no power. It's like Moses want to go and straighten somebody else out. And the Jew man say, Who are you? You, you think you'll, you'll, you'll kill him like you kill an Egyptian? Get out of here, man. The man has no mandate. 
Can somebody shout hallelujah? That was a very good Jew, man. The Jew know who the hell were you? Where are you coming from? You think we don't know your weaknesses? You're a killer. Get off here. And Moses run. That young man made Moses run. He made himself an exile. Be seated. <laughs> be seated. Be seated. Let me see them. Where is that ripened seed? That's your death. Smell like, smell like Solomon. They were wise in other things. But the wisdom on their own situation. Look at Solomon's wisdom. How could they have allowed himself to be fooled by women? It's because lost was his challenge. It's because the devil is tweaking. It makes you feel that who you are. And what we try to do is to disconnect you. You are not that. There's a higher self in you. To put a fight in you. Maybe see that. So most times you begin to compromise with the human spirit. You begin to sympathize with your humanity, with your weaknesses. Well, I am weak, I'm human. To err is human. To forgive is divine. So only God can forgive. God understand. I'm human. And we find court. We are negotiating. And we broke a deal with our human spirit. Then we are bound. But I am not going to break any deal. The human spirit has no deity in it. It has no divinity. It's a fallen angel spirit. What we need is a higher spirit. It's called the Holy Ghost. Somebody said the Holy Ghost. That's the only spirit that can put under control the human spirit. Your brain, your angel, it can't do it at all. The human spirit will only recognize the Holy Spirit. It can only accept submission to the Holy Spirit. Let me see. Where is that ripening seed? Like Brother Bruno struck yesterday. Is that where we are now? I am not a bishop. When God adopts me, I am a son in the making. I know that. My adoption is not the making, man. That's why. That's how I feel about myself. And that helps me manage my behavior. Because that's my expectation. I didn't leave my university graduate to come and preach to be a church elder. By first option, because God leave room for that. I would be the fivefold. I would set my people free. It's God's choice to make me otherwise. God gave me a choice, that's my first choice. Hallelujah. There are folks in my church, they want to do nothing. I say, Look, why can't you choose to be a doctor? The medical field, that's the highest one. Get the mindset for God to go for the best in life. Leave the rest with God. Because we can propose, God disposes, but we have a choice. If God gives you a choice, it's a choice. So if I have to make a choice between an elder and a fiver minister, I will choose the fiver minister. I will settle down for an elder. If I have a choice to be rich or to be poor, I will choose to be rich. If I have a choice to be a I'm open the book of life, he said there are two sections. It's your choice. He said one section has regular life. Can be good, nice, be a good person, go to heaven. It's a section. But it says that it's another section. It said, it said, listen, it said the same book. It's not two books, so same book. One, your name never comes out. Over here, you can be good, but if you don't repent, it comes out. Now, why do you choose to believe your name is in the eternal section? How are you even sure it's there? 
gave a choice between the two sections. So I choose to be in the lamb section. In that section, my name never comes out. But you can choose to be a regular church member, pay your good tithe, don't lie, don't fornicate, and go to heaven still. Don't need no Holy Ghost, no power. Let me just pay my tithe, be humble, come to church. How are you? But your life has no deity, no power, just a form of godliness. But I choose otherwise. I choose the life of the Lamb. I want to be like Jesus. That's a choice I make. It's a conscious choice. You can't force it on me. It's a conscious choice. The prophet opened the books. And it made me see how the book stand. But he gave me my choice. Well, I made a choice. I want to be like Jesus. I want to have deity in my flesh. I want to be God veil. I want to be a child of God. That's the choice I make. And that is what I'm living for. Let me do this. Let me see this. But I'm saying this age is the age of choice. It's a choosing day. We are brought to a junction. Ruth made a choice. She could have gone back. Because Naomi gave her the reasons why they should go back. Naomi said, you, you can't make it. If I should even have a child now, how long, how long will you wait? He gave all the reasons why they should go back. But in the face of all those reasons, the reasons all sounded logical. They sounded true. But Ruth said, I'm not going. What you are talking is reasoning. This is intellectual. I'm going with you. Your grave is my grave. Where you die, I will die. That was a hard choice to make. Let me see that. And Opa went with reasoning. What sounded logical? Well, what Naomi said makes sense. So I think it makes sense to go back. That's reasoning. There was no faith on the inside. But Ruth saw the reasoning. He said, you talking intellect. You talking your brain. I'm going down to Israel. Let me see that. It's a choice you make. Let me see that. But, a, but, but a Peter gave a coat. Royal seed of Abraham, Jesus Christ. What well, I brought it down that you are the royal seed. It's a choice. If you sympathize with your human spirit, that says, no, that's not, that's, that, that's not, that. it doesn't mean that. You can't be the royal seed. You are, you are human. You make a choice. You make a choice. So that the Branham had opened the seals for all of us, my brother. He told me that I'm the physical manifestation of the art keeper that was in God is a choice to believe it. Ram said, I'm the literal spoken seed word of God. That's what he said. He leaves room for you to believe that. He said, those who are possessed of the spirit, they are a part of those angelic beings that resisted the devil's lie. So the Holy Ghost is in you. You are a part. It's a choice to believe it. But he left room for you to believe it. Let me see that. The rooms are there. A man's gift make it room. The greatest gift is the word. The word you believe makes room for you. I believe in science wonders. It's not Pentecost. I believe in casting out devils. That's, the, that's my belief. I chose to believe that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I choose to be a demon, demon hunter. Cast the devils out. I choose to believe that. It's a choice you must make. We are all products of the choices we make. 
all things are possible to them that believe. But the Branham opened seven seals. Each seal has its own content. The choice is yours. I choose the seventh one. The other six seals are fine. There's redemption going on there. Because even the six seals hold the redemption of the earth. But I choose the seventh one. And that's what I preach. I make all my claims on that seal. It's a choice. Others choose to preach the six. And say seventh is close. In the message. Can you imagine that? They deliberately close the seventh one. When the prophet said it is open, they said it is close. And you think I must follow them to be closed seal? No, to me it is opened. And I see Christ in that seal. I see my name in that seal. My inheritance, my possession, that's what I see in that seal. Hallelujah! It's a choice you make. Let me see that. I'm not finished. Let me see that. Let me see that. I've enjoyed myself on the word. Let me see that. Let me see that. Now the Holy Ghost can come and see that. So you can make your choice today. I choose to be the word image. Ram says, when this human element all goes out, when we are all loaded out, we are formed into his very image. I choose to become that. Because the only image that goes in the rapture is the word image. This human spirit is high breed, is a mixed spirit. You can't get the rapture. So God put a death on it. It has to die. Make up your mind to kill that spirit today. Because it's your agag. If it doesn't die, it will kill you. The human spirit. Enough of that in the message. We all need the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. And when God gives you the Holy Ghost, your battle begins. Between the Holy Ghost, your new spirit, another spirit, and your human spirit. As you obey the Holy Spirit, you make the human spirit inactive. Then you are led by the Spirit. Holy Ghost flushes out all the evil. People do me that are wrong. People hurt me. They hurt the human spirit. They don't hurt the Holy Spirit. So if I feel hurt in my human spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and flushes the earth out. Because the Holy Ghost acts as a bumper. So I don't really feel hurt. Hurt can only stay in me for, for a while, for minutes. It goes off again. So I don't understand how Christians can keep grudges for weeks, for months, for years. And they claim to have the Holy Ghost. It is human to keep grudges. But it is divine to let them go. But the Holy Ghost must help you. Hallelujah! It's now time we connect the seventh thunder revelation to the life, the virtues. We've got to connect it before charity comes on it. It cannot just be talk. Talk, talk, talk. I have a revelation. You must connect that to the virtues. Or else no charity comes on it. You must live out the virtue of your age. So if you have a revelation, begin to connect it to the virtue of your age. Because the seven thunders are connected to the virtues. Hallelujah! And once you see the season, when the people begin to connect their faith with the life, then charity is closed. Revelation. Revelation, no life. Still backbite. Try to destroy this ministry's influence with the people. 
I, I, I never tell my job to buy my fight. I don't even tell them who is against me. James, they don't even know who is against me. He's sitting there. He went to London. He was shocked to know I have issues. He came back and said, I, I will tell you that. Because I don't want to get you involved in my fight. That, that, that's my fight. That's my training. A brother says, I have sex picket on me. It hurts me. But that's my training. I don't, I don't want to draw you to that one. Because you have your own fight too. Because it's obvious if I tell you, you would not have gone to that church. Because you, you, you want to fight for the pastor. You can't fight my fight, man. <laughs> Let me see that. But today, all the pastors, they've passed on their spirit to the people. They go and create the offenses and the troubles. They, can, they don't do the fighting. They are so lazy. They pass the fight over to the people. If I'm your pastor, you must fight for me. When Peter took his sword and caught Caiaphas' servant ear, Jesus said, no, 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 no. That's not how to do it. That's my fight. You have your fight to do, Peter. Jesus took back the ear and fixed it back. Oh, somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Let me see that. But suppose it's where any of us here will say, good, Peter. You are a loyalist. Fight more. Chop his head off. To show how loyal he was to the ministry. I believe Peter was shocked. He said, Master, you mean this guy want to kill you? I fought for you. You flip back his ears. He said, yes, Peter. You don't win wars when you fight your enemy on the same level, the same strategy, the same weapons. How do you win that war? How do you win a war against your enemy? On the same ground, same instrument, same weapons, same tactic. How do you win that war? You must have a different strategy, different weapons. So you can't overcome evil with evil because it's the same strategy, it's the same weapon, tit for tax. It says overcome evil with gold. Shout hallelujah! That's why in these meetings, we are going to overcome every evil, cancer, liquema, paralysis. That is evil. We are going to overcome it by the prayer of faith. Let me see that. Let me just round up quickly. Let me see that. Where is that wiping seed? So James was shocked. No, 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 no. I've made up my mind to go this way. And I make sure I won't even mention it. Even my wife, I won't tell her some things that I go through. Because I know the logic behind it, the human sympathy. How can they do this to my husband? And she will leave her own fight and take my fight. And most times she can't even win my fight. Because my fights are much, much more harder. I say, Sega, fight your fight, man. Because we all have our own fighting to do. Let me see that. Don't get yourself entangled fighting other men's fight. Let me see that. We all did that in the past. Now here's where Robledo. For just fought him, he, 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 he's, he's never accused us, he, he's never insulted us. We just took somebody else's fight to demonstrate our loyalty, and we lost the fight. We see that, we see that. the same guys who we are saying, Oh, oh, it's powerful, it's used of God. Please, honor he took all his messages off, off of the off of the Iraq. Seconds is become a separate seed. That's how we try to reach them. Let's go beyond that. I'm saying some hard things today, but I tend to say them because we must come to maturity. Somebody shout hallelujah! 
be seated. And let me tell you something. It only affects our young people. This fight with you, our fighters, ministers, it only kills them. They are more confused. They are more disoriented. And the young people, they don't trust no minister outside their pastor. And the pastor can't bring us to perfection. The pastor only has to make sure that there are other measures elsewhere. But they've told their, they, they, they've told their members to write their fight. So in these meetings, they won't come. Because something in this meeting must have been something they have passed on. So they must not come to this meeting. You receive it. Now listen, you young people, you members, when you buy those fight, you keep it yourself. Because you know what? You are double loaded. You have your own fight on you. And you are taking a pastor's fight is a big fight. A pastor's fight is a gigantic fight. How can you fight the pastor's fight? You can't even fight your own small, small demons. You are fighting the pastor's own. Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Let me see that. It only kills you. It only puts so much weight on the people. So much weight. They come to meet this, they are all suspicious. But they just told me that brother has left this position. So what is he doing here? And when Raymond says he must come and preach, I think we have to wait and see where he's going. Because we have been told that he has left. In fact, it's not even the message again. It's not preaching Pentecost. So let's give him some silence. Let me see that. These are spirits. I want to handle them today. They can leave you right now. They are evil spirits. They are vicious. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me finish up. If you think your brother is wrong, do what the scripture says. Bible says you go meet him. If you want to straighten me out, don't use your pulpit. Because you might not know how to do it. Let me see that. Let me see that. If I'm wrong, come and show me. Help me. Don't use your pulpit to straighten me out, but in your heart, it should destroy my influence. Make me look as if I don't know nothing. You are you, you kill your ministry. Let me see. That. Let me see. That. Many pastors have killed their ministry. The Holy Ghost has abandoned them. Because what they do now, they don't read messages, they go and sit them to hear what the other person is saying. So they prepare them. their messages to react. They are, they, are, they are warriors. They become warriors, no mandate, no commission. Let me see that. That's not how to do it. Let me see that. I'm finished. Let me see that. Listen, this can be a group. That can change that. These your friends in other churches love them. I told myself, I tell the folks back home, I've I've tried all this to live a life before you, to bring you to a spot where if I am wrong, but the James should be strong enough by now to say, Pastor, stop. Because you see, we could have done that with a cold man. We are all trained well enough to have told him, Brother, go this way. I'm sure we are all trained well enough. But we didn't do that. And the same spirit goes on. A pastor has led you for 20 years. He's human. But he's been used by God to lead you. 
but you come to a spot where you can also help him. So say, Pastor, I'm sorry, Pastor, but I think, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor I think, I think, I think you are going too extreme. Why, why can't you pray about it? Please, please, Pastor, I think you need to pray. You know, we love you. But I think the, the way you're going is too extreme. But we don't do that. Anything Pastor says, now, wow, wow. Pastor says, shoo, shoo. Then what has the training become? How much has he influenced you? He's human. There are mistakes I make. I'll say, say, as out, out. I told her, don't support me like a blind wife. Have enough courage to tell me if I'm wrong because you can do that. These members, they just follow, follow. And when I fall, they are the ones who say, a pastor has fallen, no. But if I fall, you fall. So don't make me fall. Stand in the gap and say, Pastor, you can't go this way. I will not let you go this way. That makes you a virtuous wife. May we see that? I said, the day you miss to do that, I will lose confidence in you. You are my wife. Like Brother Burnham told how his wife would stand between him and the public. When Brother Burnham lied, his wife said, Daddy, you can't do this. Look at the kids. What influence do you leave for Joseph then? If they hear you tell a lie, you are in the house, you say you're not in the house. His wife challenged him on that. I believe all that helped the prophet to make it right. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Where is that wiping seed? Hallelujah. How many wives today can tell their husbands, the husband, I think you are going wrong. I think you are going too far. I think this issue is going overboard. I mean, in, I mean, in, in, your, in your close moments. Because let me tell you something. I told Sarah, I said, so, Sarah, you know me. We have been for those six years. So you must always tell when I am not myself. There are times when I go off gear. But if I go off gear, don't mind me. It's not me. Because the pastor you marry to. You know that's not the pastor. Put me back into gear. Everybody here has standard chance to go off gear. But God gave us helpmates. He gave us wife. He gave us deacons. He gave us elders. Yes. To bring us back into gear. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Where is that wiping seed? But most of our deacons, they are so immature. If the pastor says, I'm going to kill and say, We are behind you. The prophet said, one word off, you're my enemy. Draw your sword, draw your sword. Cut him off, cut him off. So when they come to church, they want to watch if their pastor is talking to you. If their pastor doesn't greet, they won't even greet you. And if anybody does that, are you so insensitive? Don't you see what the context is now, but all today. Why are you going to greet me? spirits and we call that holy ghost that's not bad character that's demonic this group today to is broke we can change we can change that hallelujah we can change that let's go back and change our churches listen we all have evil things you can talk about but the prophet said you must learn at least to see the nice ones. Because it is better off. It edifies. It's a choice we must make. I pray that this group I've been to places where I've been to countries. 
once you go there, this pastor is again that pastor is again that pastor is again that pastor. And when they meet, it is so at times I'm shocked when they come back together. Bro, hey, how are you? Bro, I'm bro, your message, eh? I just heard what they said a few minutes ago. So I'm saying, Jesus Christ. I just heard what they said a few minutes ago about that brother. But that brother is shallow as a relationship. He doesn't push much, he doesn't preach deep, he just preach. Then when he sees him, bro, your tips was a blessing, eh? Ah, I watched him. I said, Jesus Christ. Yo, is this bright? Is this the bright Christ is coming for? No, 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 no. We can change that, bro. Let's come to mature with it, please. I came today not to preach shouting message. This is the last message. Let's change that. Because it kills our ministry. It kills our churches. It kills our people. And the unlearned ones, the immature ones, who are trying to follow somebody, it just kills them. Hallelujah, praise God. But God is looking for a group. Maybe this can be the group today. On the three or four. That can find brotherly kindness. That can say with their mouth what's in their hearts. Let me tell you my principle. If I tell you something that hurts you, no matter how right it is, if you say you feel hot, I'll say I'm sorry. I tell my folks because I don't intend doing it to actually hurt you originally. Maybe I didn't say it well. You know, I'm not a grammar student. Maybe sometimes I just miss the words. But if you express your heart, I'm always willing. Because you know why? To show you my original intention was not to hurt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I won't say, no, I'm right. And sometimes people think you are weak. You are too sorry, sorry. Everything sorry, everything sorry. It's not sorry, sorry. Oh. It's a life. Because you are not my enemy. You don't even have to be my enemy. But, 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 but the young man said, if your enemy is plural, you have a problem. Because our enemy is singular. The devil. Many ministers have corrected me. I don't feel, I don't feel upset. But I, I would tell them what you've just done to don't do to another man. Because you to another man, he becomes enemy for life. Because some ministers are beyond correction. If you correct them, even one to one, who are you? They will go behind their pulpit on their internet. That black brother has no identity. <laughs> Doesn't even know who he is. <laughs> I say, so what you've done to me, keep it. Don't do it to nobody else again. But it must not be that way. As a minister, I am too. It's, he has the right to say, bro, I think you are, you, are, you are not doing things this way. Because we are one another's keeper. It is iron that sharpens iron. Yes. Amen. Somebody say, Imagine the high church. Yes. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. You know, when I first came to Inuga, I was preaching those years. I would just, I would just preach, preach, preach. I put my, that was my, my first message. But at least Brother Ayo was alive then. So I preached. The Holy Ghost just dropped down, meaning that I was to stop. But I just went on. So the, the anointing died down. So after service, they call me and say, Don't come. See, don't do like that. So I, I stood up straight. He was not even a pastor, an assistant. What he said was right. He said, When you're preaching, sometimes leave the Holy Ghost to minister to people. Yeah. You say, that, That's your message. You should have just left the Holy Ghost to minister. You don't have to finish your message. I said, Thank you, sir. Yeah. It's not going to be with the Lord, but he left that with me. But plenty ministers will not take that. They will 
ask you what, what, what your, your audacity for me to preach and you are telling me what to say? Who are you? Somebody say amen to that church. I'm looking for a group. Honestly, I'm looking for a group. May this be the group where God can find some mature seeds. Your we can say, I'm sorry. Please, I don't say if I say something, it, 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 you are hurt. I'm sorry, not if I hurt you. The person is already hurt. Say, if I hurt you, I've hurt you by saying this. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. And you must find enough grace to say, I forgive you. That's how, that's how to settle it. Not go back and call your people. Come, come around. Decide, call the disciples and poison their spirit and set them up against that pastor. Oh, I will call a convention. Bro, I love you. What a message. Hallelujah. What an anointing. We can get over that today. Before we leave, the Holy Ghost put into my heart to go this way. The takings of our church, let's start making them mature. Let's tell them, because we saw the mistake in New York. Let's tell them we can sometimes be wrong. And they must know we are living the life before them. They must tell when we get off guard. They must know this is not the only we knew. But the Olu, that was not the Olu we knew. And you must help with the Olu. Because you've been with him for years. So you must know when it changed. And stand by him. Because suppose we have done that 2011. It might not have sounded well. But maybe it could have saved a situation. But fear. I am part of that fear group as well. Of course, we knew it was wrong. But fear. So, the old man's labor of bringing up a crop was really there. We were all simply immature. We were all on rival. And if we don't change that, it comes back to our churches. Pastors are preaching, they are preaching people in their pulpit. Their members are jumping. When they are busy insulting the pastors, they are jumping, help me preach it. And the and people are asking me, he says, Holy Ghost. It's not Holy Ghost. Oh. Lift up your hands. Musicians coming forward. Now, now, wherever you are, I've stayed so long with you. Wherever you are, put your hands up, please. Pastors, deacons, members. Let's make this a solemn moment. We have a Jordan to cross. The prophet said, let's quit playing. Let's quit playing church. We can't be hireless because we can't go back to the wilderness. Let's stop this playing, this politic, church politic. Please give me a key there. As you lift up your hands, young people, if you're here today and your minds are poisoned, say, God, empty me out, Lord. As you lift your hands up, close your eyes, play there for me softly. Wherever you are right now, the Holy Spirit is there. Let's get this burden out. Let's get this evil spirit out of our lives. Let's be men enough. Let's be mature. Let's be ripening seeds. Deacons, officers, ministers, let's come to maturity. Close your eyes. Let's ask for his mercy. Let's ask for his grace. Let's ask for his pardoning. I believe if we do this with sincerity, God can pour out the dynamics. God can refresh us. God can refill us. He can give us back those days when the Holy Ghost was burning. It's our responsibility. As our answer lifts up, ministers, all of us, let's pray right now. Open your mouth, members, wives, husbands. We are sick in this message. We need help. Young people, we need your help. Lift up your voice and cry for the fivefold ministry. 
Say, God, help my pastor. Help my dicky Lord. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your ministers. Lift up your pastor today. Please, let's do that. For a few minutes. I believe the Holy Ghost will hear us. Let's ask you for mercy. Let's ask you for grace. Let's come to maturity. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We've made everything right. We've set up the altar right. We've made our confessions right. We've asked for mercy, Lord. We ask for grace, Lord, Father. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Your Jesus. Mercy rewrote my life. What a sing that song for me. Mercy rewrote my life. This is the last day, church. The final day of the feast. Yeah, yes, Lord. Jesus. We all need to do that. We all need to do that, church. This is a solemn day. After these meetings, the heart of the Lord can be torn. God wants the church to come to this box. Let's recheck our lives. We are all included. We are all included, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Father, I stand here today. I stand under your mercy, Lord Jesus. I'm just as guilty as anybody else, Lord. Forgive me. Your mercy, Lord. Clean up my heart, Lord Jesus. I am not exempted. I am not out of it, Lord Father. But the Holy Ghost has pierced my heart. The Holy Ghost has touched my heart. I ask for mercy. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for grace, Lord Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. Show grace to your people. Show them mercy, Lord Jesus. Bring us back to where we shall be. As sons of God. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Jesus. Make your heart right with God today. You are person. Make your heart right. Make your heart right. This can be your final convention. Make your heart right. Your person. Put your heart right. The word of God has gone forth. Put your heart right. Tune up your heart with God. The hour is late. We are right in the coming of the Lord. The hour is late. Church, pitch yourself. Wake up to reality. Stop dreaming. Let's come to reality. The hour is late, Lord. Father, push my life. Yeah. Jesus, yes, Lord Father. Father, come to our heart this day, Jesus. God can find the grub. Where is that ripened seed of Malachi 4, Father? Malachi 4's message. Malachi 4's labor shall bring forth a ripened seed, Lord. Where is that ripened seed? Make us that ripened seed, Lord. Bring us to maturity. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God.
the right choice today oh God I choose life I refuse death but I choose life today and I want to make the right decision Lord I want to make the right choice Lord in this atmosphere in the presence of God and while the Holy Spirit is present hallelujah God I want to make the right choice today I don't want to leave here knowing I didn't make the right choice oh God and you've given me the opportunity you've given me the chance to make right with you oh God what an opportunity what a day what a time and God has given us a chance hallelujah where mercy will rewrite your life oh mercy That's what mercy can do today. That's what the Holy Spirit can do today. He can rewrite your life. He can rewrite your, 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 the choices you made. He can bring you back to life again. If only you reach out and say, God, it's me. Not my brother, not my sister. But deal with me, oh God, it's me. I'm the one that needs your presence. I'm the one that needs your forgiveness. I'm the one that needs the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God, it's me to say this time, so just where you're standing, that angel of God is right there. The presence of God is right there. You can say, God, today, I want to walk out of here a different man, a different woman, a different young child, a different person, Lord. Mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, His presence is here. Mercy. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let him say it's not real. This is real. We don't have much time longer. We come to the end of the age. We come to the end of the world. But brother, sister, there's, there's something God want to do for you. And He want to do for me. And the only way, God, you have to speak it from your mouth. You, you got to tell God yourself. Tell Him what you need. Tell Him what you want. Tell Him what you expect. Tell him, Lord, this is the last day of the feast, but I'm leaving with your presence today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. While his presence is here, while his anointed is here, we want to we wanna get ready for that prayer line and believe that God is going to manifest himself. Believe the angel of God is already here. And I believe as you pass through that prayer line, the Holy Spirit already touched you and set you free by the preaching of the word. But when you come through the prayer line, you just come in to receive what you have need of. Hallelujah. So God, I'm not, I'm not going to get out of this atmosphere. I want to stay in this atmosphere. I want to maintain it, oh God. I want to stay under this anointing so that when I come through the line, I can receive what God has in store for me. We're looking for God to do the impossible. We're looking for God to do the impossible. Hallelujah. There's nothing to hard for our God. Oh, mercy, reroll my, my life. Oh, I could have fallen, but so cast down. Oh. Wonderful to think he can rewrite your life today. Just one moment, he can rewrite your whole life. One, one choice that you make today can rewrite your whole life, can change the whole attitude of your life. One, one, one change, one moment, one choice that you make today can rewrite your whole life this morning. Oh, hallelujah. F. 
Maintain this atmosphere. Just close your eyes. Hello, if you want to raise your hand, just maintain this atmosphere as the diggers are preparing the frontier for the prayer line. Oh, as we, hallelujah, continue to meditate upon Him. We continue to realize that it's only His grace and His mercy. Oh, hallelujah. And that's why we are here this morning. And we believe coming through this line, hallelujah, will be. The angel of God meeting us first and then the ministers laying hands. And as we come, we come believing, come, we come in to receive what God has got in store for us this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, Lord, I choose life. I choose life, Lord. Let that blood, let that water, blood and life come upon me. If you're feeling dead in your spirit, you can know that God can bring you alive. God can charge you. You're the orphan in this morning. Which mm. can touch the Lord as He passes by? You will find Him not too busy to hear your heart. I wonder if the pastors at this time would like to come forth just to. Uh, Join us in this prayer line, this moment, the, especially the ministering pastors that have preached. You could just come at this time. If you believe uh, that you, you can help God's people, you can, can come and join us in this prayer line. And we want to say uh, the, the deacons will guide you row by row. We, we're not going to have the people pile up in the queue, but just wait. The deacons will come around and they will instruct you when to come so just sit there in prayer and pray for those that are coming forth so we just want to welcome all the pastors you're welcome to come join us to come and pray for the people you'll find him not too busy to hear your heart's cry he smiles Sing by this moment your need he will supply reach out and touch the Lord as he we just like to ask the pastor's wives uh, if they could just assist in the prayer line in case one of the sisters goes in the spirit pastor's wives and maybe deacon's wives, you could just come forward to it this time.
my Jesus on the cross the people crying looking on a man and thing that's such a treasure But what the world could not see was when they named him to that tree. He broke the chains of sin and said.
amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bore my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond all my fault and so my need
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, hey, hey. to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Oh, there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army. Stood 
than all rather cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dear rest and best for the world of lost sinners was laid. So I cherish, so I cherish the old rabbit cross. Tell my troll. At last I lay down I will cling to the old rather cross And I'll change it someday for Yeah. 
the old rugged cross I will never be true His shame and reproach gladly bear And he called me someday to my home far away where his glory I 
the Lord, hallelujah. Can all the pastors remain standing in front? Praise the Lord, can all the pastors remain standing in front? We just want to take a picture.
so kind in my heart. My, 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 my. I wonder if we can't stand to our feet. And, and, and let's give the Lord Jesus a shout of praise that made the meetings possible. Let's say thank you, Jesus. He's the one that made this possible. And we give Him all the honor and we give Him all the glory and the worship. And we say thank you to Jesus. Thank you for touching us. Hallelujah. Don't you feel good? Don't you feel free? Don't you feel liberated? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name. I want you to turn around and just shake your neighbor's hand. Just give them a good hug and a good bless you. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Just express your appreciation for them coming. We want to say thank you to everyone that has come. To everyone that has made this meeting possible for you coming to bless us with your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, just say thank you. God bless you. you uh, this might be, as Brother Conte said, this might be the last time we see one another, but we're so glad that you came. And we just want to say thank you. My, 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 my. God bless you. If, he's, if you are through, just we won't be too long. Amen. We have in church today. You appreciate our precious Pastor Conte? My, what can we say? God bless you, Brother Conte. You may be seated. Uh, spoke what God laid upon his heart. And I believe uh, that's a man filled with the Holy Spirit. Follows the leading of the Holy Spirit. Preach what God laid in his heart. And we want to say thank you and we salute you and your precious wife. May you just uh, greet your church back home in Freetown. So I just want to, so again, just quickly want to thank our brother Isaac, brother Chandler, brother Robledo, brother Theo, brother Old, brother Conte. Can we just give them a hand of salute? Right. God richly bless you, bless your ministries, bless your churches. Please send our regards from South Africa back at home. Uh, Brother Isaac, greet your wife, Brother Theo, your church and family. Greet them back home. Uh, Brother Olu, well, he's still going to be a few days with us. And then uh, Brother Conte also is leaving tomorrow, so we pray send greetings. Brother Plano, greet Sister Rebecca, your church, your family, the Coleman family. Just greet them on our behalf. Amen. So we just want to uh, thank Brother Vic for coming. Brother Owen Palm, Brother Gerald Blair, Brother Reuben, Brother Davey, Brother Norman, Brother Ivan, Brother Lowen. They came with some of their people. Let's just give them a thanks for coming. And uh, the different pastors that came, and we just want to salute you. Thank you for coming. Those that have come today for the first time, I'm sure you were blessed. And I believe God has met with you. And you're going home a, a different person because you're Mercy rewrote your life today and you made the right choice. And uh, the enemy will come back after these meetings and preach back to you and say nothing happened. But you can point him back and say, this day the scriptures was fulfilled in my life and I had a change and I had an experience with this. So all the menacing brethren, thank you for bringing your people. The convention is normally not a convention if there's no people to preach to. So we want to say thank you for coming. And then we just want to thank all the deacons, our deacon. Uh, man, we just want to salute them, the great job they did with their wives and uh, just helping us. Uh, that's Brother Luke, uh, Ramasetti, Brother Clyde, Brother uh, and Becky, and then uh, Luke Ramasetti and his wife, Gabello. They did so much behind the scenes. And then Brother Elijah and his wife, Sister Bibi, we want to say thank you. Let's just give them a hand. They really did a lot of work behind the scenes. So we want to appreciate them. Sister Abigail, she, she helped so much with the ministers. She put the snack bag, not a snack pack, but she did a job to take care of the ministers. They had something to snack on. We want to say thank you. And it made the burden so much easier, lighter. Uh, 
and that's uh, Luke. If you can stand there, Luke and Caleb. Where's Bernie? She also. We just want to thank her, Bernie, Becky, Hope. We want to say thank you for your support. Luke and Caleb there, the video man. Brother Marks, the sound man. They're all the video men on the cameras. We just want to salute them. What can we say about the musicians, everyone that played? My, it was just such a blessing. And we sure appreciate, uh, they were just interchanging. And but Isaac was pulled in also, so uh, he's a man of all trades. <laughs> so God bless you, Brother Isaac. So uh, uh, we want to say thank you to the musicians. What can we say about all the chorus leaders? My, we want to salute them also. And uh, they did so a splendid job. And then, what can we say about the specials that were sung? Wow. Father, I tell you, we don't need to hear Beyonce or any of these people, man. God has got enough gifts in the church that has blessed us. And we want to salute you, all the groups, all the people. Sorry, we couldn't accommodate everyone, but we want to say thank you. And then I, I want to salute the congregation for yesterday. You know, the, the three meetings went so well. And everyone played their part. I want to salute you. You're such a great congregation, man. Everyone just played their part. They were here on time. And it, it made things just go so easy. So God made it possible because of your attitude and your respect that you gave. And the respect that you showed uh, towards the convention. And it made it so easy that we could even... Last night was almost like an early night, a three-day service. But last night was the earliest night we had, you know. So thank you and God bless you. Uh, we, we will be departing now. Uh, uh, brother all of them, uh, Brother Theo them leaves tomorrow. Brother Isaac leaves tomorrow. Brother Conte leaves tomorrow. So if you do get a chance to shake their hand or speak, just say God bless you and have a safe trip. So we're going to stand and I don't know, it's so hard to close out the meeting. But it comes to an end. But we, we're going to dismiss from this convention but not from his presence. That's the main part. So from here, we go with his presence. And wherever we go to, as our brother uh, Conte said, let us be aware every second of his presence being with us. So that when we make a choice, it will be the right choice. Can we stand to our feet? Brother Owen Palm, will you just come and close on first? Sorry, I uh, was asking for Owen Pam just to come forward and close, so he's pushing me to the front. Um, before uh, we give over to Pastor Owen to close, can we all salute Pastor Raymond Thompson and his wife, Sister Gabe, for the faith to have they had to host this convention? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ray, Sister Gail. Thank you. And, uh, this is a vision achieved. Amen. And uh, he was stressing about the three meetings, how we're going to do it and so on. But God is in control. Amen. And uh, what a perfect message it was today to cap off the convention. All the pastors here and so on. And, uh, and for us also individually, we are all challenged. And I believe that we're going to live here being round stones that smooth, you know, stay in the stones in the river, they rub against each other when the water flows and they make each other smooth. So that water that was flowing, the stones are rubbing against each other. So we're going to be smooth and all the drops, the odds are being dropped and love divine is taking control. God bless you. And what can we say about the COO of the convention? Brother Luke. He just had everything under control by the way. So I think whoever has a next convention, whether it be in South Africa, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, America, Trinidad, Amen. Our brother Luke Ramasidi will be the continuating Amen C O O. Amen. And his wife sister Kabi as well. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Shout by his in a word of prayer. Oh God, Father, we sense your presence here today. 
Lord, and as we depart and go to our different homes, Father, traveling by air, by road, by rail, by taxi, wherever, God, your children will go. We pray now that, dear God, they'll go with the anointing upon them. Steer them out of danger, O oh God. And Father, we pray the angel of God go before them. And Lord, thank you for their efforts, dear God. We know many of them even financially will go back, dear God, and maybe in the natural, not knowing how they will make it, Lord, the money they spent to come here. But I believe you would fill those pockets again and fill the cupboards, Lord, and just bless them in a wonderful way. And dear God, we thank you once again, Lord, for Brother Isaac over how, how he kick-started Lord, uh, keynote the convention, Lord, which is so wonderful, Lord. And then you know, all the ministers in between, and then the closing today of the Conte. Lord, it was just something special, God. What a way to end a convention. Father, and we thank you for this time. We could have fellowship with one another. And Lord, we pray, dear God, that you watch between us. And may, Lord, the next convention, dear God, we prepare to look forward to if it may be. Watch over us now, God, and protect us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready to worship the Lord now? Are you ready to worship the Lord? I can't hear you. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We call by the given. Brother Jared, <laughs> all the chorus leaders will come forward, amen, and the Lord will richly bless you this morning. Praise God, hallelujah. Sing it wonderful chorus, one day step forward, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Una, lo, una. Tell your neighbor, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord, amen. Just one announcement to the Joburg brothers. The Luke's requesting you to stay behind once we've all dismissed. The Joburg brothers could just remain in the hall. Amen. 
Jesus is a mighty God. 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 Jesus is a mighty. He's a mighty. Jesus is a mighty. Just hang on brothers, hang on, hang on, hang on. The song says, I lead the chorus. I say, Jesus is a mighty God. And the entire church says, He's a mighty God. I say, Messiah is a mighty God. The entire convention says, He's a mighty God. Let's try it together now. Jesus is a mighty God. Jesus is a mighty God. Says Jesu Nashuela Calvary. Hallelujah. Brothers, you know that one? Jesu Nashuela Calvary. Oh, Jesu Nashuela Calvary. Kalibakala di Bizaruna. Io, yo, Calvary. Io, Calvary. Oh, Nashuela, Jesu Nashuela Calvary. Kaliba kala di bitaruna, i 
Iyo Calvary, Iyo Calvary, Iyo Iyo Calvary, Iyo 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 Calvary, Iyo Iyo Calvary, Iyo Iyo Calvary, Iyo Calvary, Iyo Iyo Calvary, Iyo 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 Calvary, Oh Iyo Iyo Calvary. Shela Calvary, Kaliba Kala di Vitaruna, Io Io Calvary, Io Calvary, Jesso Nashela, Jesso Nashela Calvary, Kaliba Kala di Vitaruna, Io Io Calvary, Io Calvary, Io Io Calvary, Io Io. Oh, yo, 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 cavalo, yo, 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 cavalo, yo, cavalo, yo, put your hands together. to Nigeria. Hallelujah. Oh, my don't need Ebube, oh, Ebube, Jehovah, Marama. My don't need Ebube, Ebube, Jehovah, Marama. Oh, my don't need Ebube, Ebube, Jehovah, Marama. Maduni ne nasi ebube ebube jioba marama oh maduni ne nasi ebube ebube jioba marama maduni ne nasi ebube ebube jioba marama Hallelujah Hallelujah Amen. 
How about we try the song we tried yesterday? Boya Omema. Boya Omema. Brother Joel, where are you? Joel from King William Sound? Where are you? We will, you can run, but you cannot hide. Brother Joel, wherever he is, please identify him. There's a reward. Brother Joel? Brother Goki, you can't run away. Brother Ajigoki, you can. And Brother Chow, Pastor Charles Okichobi, you can't run away as well. Pastor Charles Okichobi. And Brother Joshua Moy. Brother Joshua. We're making a poiki course here. God bless you. We must record an album out of all these men here. Hallelujah. Lost and found. If you lost a set of glasses, here they are here. Everything. All those are Bulgarians. <laughs> we nearly let them go, bro. <laughs> uh, the set of DVDs of this convention will be available immediately after this service. So you need to place your order. Amen. By Brother Luke Thompson. He's there. Brother Luke Thompson, just wave there. That's Brother Luke Thompson. So after this service, just uh, go and place your order there. It's 150 for a set. Amen. God bless you. Brother Go. Okay. Church, say amen. amen. All right. Now, God has answered our prayers. And we've had a mighty convention. Say amen. amen. Now, the desire that was on your heart, when you pass through the prayer line, God has already answered you. Amen. Now, I want you to turn around to somebody next to you. Say, God has answered my prayer. And we're going to leave here with a testimony. Oh, there's a song in Nigeria. We... Can... I need you on the internet. Oh, the internet is... Thank you. All right, so the title of the song is a Nigerian song. I'm going to sing it with Brother Charles Akujobi. Brother Charles is the father of this song leader. So you can imagine a man who is the father of a song leader. The title of the song is One Name Biane. That is, brother, come and see what the Lord has done for me. When I pass through that prayer line, I want you to hear my testimony. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Sister, come and see. You have got to speak it. They have told us in the convention, when you speak it, the Spirit of the Lord will catch it and make it come to pass. Now, church, say amen. Now, I want you to scream out your testimony. Come and see what the Lord has done for me in this convention. Brother Charles and I are going to sing it together. The song goes like this. Oh, one name be a name. 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 So that's the response. Is Brother Charles says the response. I say one name be a name. One name be a name. One name be a name. Brother, come and see. One name be a name. One name be a name. He gave me life. He gave me peace. He gave me joy. He gave me happiness. One name be a name. 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 Brother, come and see.
My brother, come and see. My sister, come and see. My brother, come and see. My sister, come and see. He gave me life when I had no life. He gave me joy when I had no joy. Oh, come and see. My brother, come and see. My sister, come and see. My brother, come and see. Oh, one day, 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 Congress, you know. Hallelujah. I want to hear the, the bass guitarist. I want to hear the piano. I want to see, hear the organ. I, I want to hear the rhythm. Raise God, amen. I want to make the music together. Are you ready to worship him? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, 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 He didn't let the devil win. No, he didn't let the devil win. He didn't let the devil win. Somebody shout! He didn't let the devil win. Oh yeah. He didn't let the devil win. 
He didn't let the devil away. Come on. Put your hands together this way. He didn't let the devil away. 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 Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Now, sisters, I want to hear you now. Oh, lift up your voices. Come on, put your hands together, sisters. One more time. Come on, come on, scream it, scream it to the rooftop. Come on, oh, yeah, brothers. Come on, give us your voice, lift up your voices. Oh, come on, brothers. Lift your voices higher. I want to hear you one more time. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, now. I want everybody joining the singing. Oh, 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 son. Oh, son. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The devil win. Oh, he didn't let the devil win. He didn't let the devil win. He never let the devil win. He never let the devil win. Satan lost the battle. Satan lost the battle. Satan. I want you to shout hallelujah! 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 Oh, Hallelujah! We're going back to South Africa. Where is Brother Emil? Hallelujah! Are you so happy today? Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah! I want to. Brothers, can you just give me a key C? Bless me the name of the Lord. Yo 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 heliga ma yo heliga ma yo heliga ma yo heliga ma le yo 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 heliga ma yo heliga Come on dance for the Lord Oh heliga ma yo 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 Come on, let me hear you. Yo 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 Let's do it one more time Yo yo Let me see your hands now Yo yo yo, helica. Yo yo, 
Come on, dance for the Lord. Yo yo yo, Eli Kama. Oh 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 oh. Let me hear you, brothers. Oh 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 oh. Eli Kama. Yo 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 yo. Wonderful, Yo 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 yo. Sisters only. Yo yo, sisters, one more time. Let me hear you sing. Let's hear the brothers now. Yo 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 yo. Wonderful. Hey. Hey. Yeli kama. Yo yo yo. Let's sing it all together now. the one of yesterday now Jehovah will be it's for the last time just before we dismiss right are you ready to dance hallelujah it's brother Akona there brother Akona brother Akona Zwana Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Give me a key, bro. Just give me a key. Oh, ngiti nangu Jehovah. Evuli minyango. Ngiti nangu Jehovah. Evuli minyango. Ageko. Oh, ngapala. Nangu Jehovah. Nangu Jehovah. Evuli minyango. Ngiti nangu Jehovah. Evuli minyango ageko Konga pala Nangu Jehovah Nangu Jehovah Evuli minyango ageko Konga pala Sangena, sangena, china Sangena, 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 sangena Oh, sangena, 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 ageko bonga bala. Praise the Lord now. Hallelujah. Jump, 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 Brothers, loosen up your ties now. Come on, everybody, jump. Jump, jump, jump. Sangena, sangena. Sangena, 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 again, Nangu Jehovah, Nangu Jehovah, every living young monkey, every living young monkey, Sangena, 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 Tina, Sangena, Tina. Tina, Tina, 
family is in trouble. Let's enter it. Sangena, 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 Sangena. Jehova, Ebuli mi nyango ngiti nangu Jehova, Ebuli mi ake. Oh nangu Jehova, oh sangena 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 china sangena. Sangena, Sangena, Sangena. For the last time now. Sangena, 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 Tina. Sangena, Tina, Sangena, Tina, Sangena, Tina, Sangena. Again, oh, oh, ah, ah. calling your name but it's over taken by the horn and uh, I've been told they say there's a new revelation in the camp there's a new kid on the block brother Caleb from Stutterheim there's a fresh revelation brother Caleb Come, Brother Caleb, I know the crowd could be overwhelming me. Hang it to Nalo, 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 Wangi Susanna, Wangi Begane, Ooh. 